Hello, my name is Leah Holloway and welcome to Start Up Sharp with the Augusta Library. It's been a while since we last saw each other, so it's really good to be back. Start Up Sharp is a web series where we focus on different skills that you can use when starting your own business from home. Our episodes so far have covered creating a marketing plan, financing your business, and marketing your business online. The Augusta Richmond County Public Library System is dedicated to enriching the lives of the community by empowering educational and professional growth. Due to the increased economic instability caused by the pandemic, we wanted to provide free expert advice to those interested in starting a home-based small business to boost their income. Today's show is going to be a little different from past shows. Um, in our past shows, we were more PowerPoint focused and we focused a lot on um, different Google applications and resources. And um, from here on out, we're just going to be doing straightforward interviews and we will also be doing a Q&A at the end of our show. Um, if you have any questions today regarding market analysis or how to conduct a market analysis, or if you have any questions before we get into our interview, please comment in the comment boxes and we will answer your questions accordingly. So um, market analysis, today we're gonna be talking about what it is and why it's important for your small business. Uh, market analysis is a thorough assessment of a market within a specific industry. Uh, market analysis are important because you want to make the best business decisions you possibly can when running your new business. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest for the day. It's Miss Cynthia Rhodes. Uh, Miss Cynthia Rhodes is a business consultant with the greater score of Aiken. Uh, she's got about 20 years of experience in owning multiple businesses and eight years of business development experience. So I don't want to give too much away about Miss Cynthia. So um, first question, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I am a business owner over 20 years. Um, I own real estate. My background is in construction. I uh, graduated Augusta University, so I'm a proud alum. And um, I, like I said, I own a real estate company, um, a business and marketing uh, management company, uh, and a logistics trucking company. And so um, I'm just really excited and happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you so much for coming on. Um, so tell me, what are the benefits of conducting a marketing analysis when you're getting started in the field? Because I'm, I'm sure you've had to run your own. <laughs> well, they, I tell you, this is the backbone. The market analysis actually tells you how you're going to be successful. So you've come up with a brilliant idea and your gut says that it's going to be a, a huge success. Well, how do you really know that it's going to be a success? Well, you know that based off of the research um, that you provide, the market analysis um, about the industry that you're going in, the customers that you'll um, sell uh, your product to. And you know, we're living in the Augusta community. So this is a community that's full of small businesses. Um, what would you say to someone who wants to start their small business here? How would you, what advice would you give them on conducting a market analysis here in Augusta? Well, the very, very first thing that I would say um, is to identify the market that they're going to be selling to. So if you have a product, whether you have a service, you have to identify who is willing, able to pay for your service. So a lot of people say that they like it, but you have to determine who is going to be my target market, who is going to be my, um, my target customer uh, that's going to pay. So I like to use the analogy of the, the avatar or the Bitmoji. And, um, and again, uh, on uh, roseporter.com, this is where I put all of my blogs and it actually says the exact same thing. Create the Bitmoji, create who is, is willing, able to buy your product. So you can get down to the age of the demographics, the, um, the family lifestyle. This is gonna be your first step in determining um, who your target customer is, because that is going to be the baseline of how you determine everything else when it comes down to your business plan. No one likes the business plan. Yeah, I mean, it is dreaded. And you know, they say, hey, um, I, I need to start a business. The first thing this person's gonna say is, let me see your business plan. Um, and the only way that you can conduct a real business plan 
um, complete with financials is knowing who and what your market is. Absolutely. Yeah, that was our very first episode was on conducting a business plan. And even me just running through everything, I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so much to this. But I, I have heard that from people who are trying to get into the business. They're just like the business plan. That's that's the most work that you have to put into it because people are going to ask, like even on the finance episode we had, they said, if you go to an investor, they're going to say, let me see your business plan. I want to see the business plan. So yeah. And I'm sure like the marketing analysis is a big part of that. Um, so can you tell us actually, I would like to hear about your experience whenever you were conducting a market, a marketing analysis, you know, or if there's like a special story or anything that you've learned from doing it. Yeah. So I, <laughs> this is so funny that you hear the term like serial entrepreneur, right? And you hear your friends and maybe say, Hey, what are you doing now? You know? But you know what that is? It is nothing more than um, actually testing the market. So when I was younger, I mean, I've been in business a long time. My, my brain just operates that way, right? So from my first thing when I was in, uh, in, in middle school, I believe, and I had a paper route. And so what I discovered as I was doing my paper route, what I found out is that there was a lot of older people who couldn't get their groceries. They, they were even having a hard time getting their, their newspaper from the front door. And so then that, that created what? A market. You know, this is a good business idea. Let me have a, start a business that we help older people with errands because they cannot do it anymore, right? So this is an this is an idea, and it actually comes from the analysis. Meaning, I have surveyed all of the route, my whole route, and I'm able to decide on how many customers I would have that need this type of service. So that is literally what the market analysis. That's a, a very basic part of what a market analysis would come from. Now, my first actual business was in business administration. It was helping businesses with their paperwork and, and all. Well, guess what? I was able to decide on the market. I was going to work with individual business owners who needed the office support, right? Yeah, um, so I was one person. Um, in order to really successfully launch that business, I had to know how much work could I actually handle myself and it based off of how many people are actually in the area that I was actually targeting. Independent owners? Well, there's a whole lot of those. Where did I get that information? Well, right down at the, um, the business license office. It tells me how many people are individually owned and if they have employees. You know, so now there's a ton of them. Oh, this is great. I have a great market. But guess what? And if I have in market two flyers or however, uh, the problem comes in is now I've grown my business too fast. You don't know that until you do the research. You don't know that. You just launch. And that's where it hinders a lot of our our um, our people of color because they fail to do the research. This is what's going to tell you how to set up the rest of your business. Again, the business plan. It does not start without knowing the market and how to present your business. Now, would you say that it's a good time to start a business right now during the pandemic? So I, that's not a yes or no. Um, and the reason why is because it depends on what type of business that you're going into. Now, again, because I love the market so much and I, I look at it all the time, one of the things that I did realize is that there was going to be an influx of what we call solopreneurs, the micro businesses. Why is that? When people lay off, again, Department of Labor, we know that these people are being laid off they're losing their jobs, they have to find income from somewhere. 
And if no one's hiring, now they have to come into um, making their own income. So yes and no. It is a good time for, uh, for some and not so good time for others. I mean, I wouldn't be saying I want to own um, a nightclub, for instance, right now, because there's no gathering. So again, if you know the market and you do the research, you'll know exactly where you should and if you should start a business. All righty. And, um, you know, what's it, what is it like running a business? Let's just go a little bit back into that for our viewers. You know, what can they expect? You know, is it a walk in the park or, you know, are they going to expect some hardships or do you have any advice on whether, you know, or what, when you should start a business or if you should not start a business? Well, I'm going to tell you this, owning, starting, operating, managing a business is no walk in the park. Um, a lot of people have their big why is, you know, things of, uh, I want the freedom. I don't want people to tell me what to do, or I, I can make more money uh, if I was doing this on my own. Well, I'll say this, there's a lot of discipline that has to come and time management that comes with owning your own business. Again, being able to scale a business and making it grow deter is, is a lot of determination. And it's taking no for an answer. Uh, you're going to hear it a lot. And I, I often feel for those who have not heard the word no in their life. And you can usually tell the ones that haven't heard the word no, because that's when they pull back. Oh, I've had no five times. Well, guess what? Try that 500 times. Um, and a lot of times you can overcome those challenges by being prepared. And again, it goes all the way back to this product and the market analysis. This is where I get excited because now you have the ammunition to actually overcome a lot of the objections and risks during business by just knowing the market. If you have a product that is, let's say face masks for right now, if you have a product and everyone needs it, you're gonna get up every day and say, hey, they need me. And you're going to make sure that you are targeting those specific people that need you. You don't mind if someone says no, because they don't understand your worth right now. They don't understand that they're missing out on an opportunity. Let's go to the next one they'll come around because as people start to jump aboard, you'll see the sales increase. So along with looking at your target audience, um, I know you also need to pay attention to your competition. Do you have any advice when um, staking out your competition or um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, staking out your competition? And, and that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, there is no market, no market that they, a person can say they have no competition. Remember when the cloth, the cloth face mask came out and you know everyone had, to, well, uh, you know, there was one person, oh, there's no one doing this in my neighborhood. Well, you know, there might be right, but there was an alternative. So that's why you have to be able to know who your competition is. So that the first thing, again, in your market analysis is that you have to de decide on what industry are you in? Because what we hear is face masks. But guess what? Are we in medical? Are, is that the industry are, that you're in? Are you in um, manufacturing? Or are you in um, face coverings? Are you in you know fabric business? What are, are you in a social business? So again, the market analysis tells you where you're going to segment and who you're going to sell this this uh, product to. And um, so how, what kind of resources would you say that our viewers should look for? Or are there any resources that you know are available that our viewers could use? Well, obviously Google, right? Uh, <laughs> that's going to be, um, or Alexa, you know, how many people, or what is, what is the population um, in Augusta, Richmond County? You know, how many families 
uh, actually um, live in the area? What is the size of that family? Now, you're going to get a lot of information from, from that source alone, making sure that they're credible from the Census Bureau you know, that kind of information, which is great because we just did a census, and so we'll have up-to-date information. Now, that is going to be the, the, you know, holy grail of information. But what I would say, and I, I'm glad that we're partnering together today, uh, because it's the library. A lot of information and data we don't have because you have to pay for it. And guess who pays for it for it? The taxpayers through the Augusta Library. And so not only do you have a wealth of information and data from the library, but guess what you also have? I'm going to give you a, a story. I hate to shop. Um, that's the worst thing. I hate going into the store and there's all kinds of uh, cloth, uh, garments and and pants and shirts and this kind and that kind. What I like to do is go to a boutique where I can go in, they say this will fit me, my event, and I'm out, right? That's the library to the market analysis because you go in there and there's all of the information, but if you decide on who your target customer is and who's gonna buy your product, guess who you have there? You have a customer service representative right there to help you find the book, the, the database, the, the resource for, to answer your question. That's what they, they, I mean, their whole life has been about research. There, there you go, you have it right there. Absolutely, the library has an unlimited amount of resources. Um, we definitely have a lot of different books that you can check out on starting your own business. Um, and of course we have this show itself so this show also helps um we haven't had any questions come in but um if you would like to just wrap up the portion of the interview is there anything else that you want to add about conducting a market analysis that you feel is important for our viewers to know well i cannot stress enough um of understanding who your customer is um i i get I'll, I'll use an, uh, um, my, my daughter, for example. She started um, a clothing business, you know, t-shirts or something like that. And she was saying, hey, I want to sell my product. Yeah, I have no problem with it. And she can make the, make the shirts. But what are the things that she did not do? I mean, it was on the, online and everything. Um, but what she did not know is who was going to buy the t-shirts. She had a lot of friends uh, on social media. She has her following, you know, she's 14, so it's like a TikTok type thing. And, you know, she has a following, but everyone can follow you. They can like your post, they like your garment. But when it comes to parting with their money, that's a whole nother ball game. And so the thing is, is that you have to know who is going to be willing and able to part with their money. Well, not to mention ready, ready, willing, and able. That's a real estate thing. So, uh, so the thing is, is that you have, you have to know when they are going to part with their money and if they're willing to part with it. If they're used to buying a Nike shirt, um, why are they going to uh, purchase your brand? Why are they gonna do that? Will they be willing to switch? So these are the type of things that you have to know about. And a lot of people think because they have the um, social media following, social media is only a part of a whole marketing plan. And actually it's only part, it's not even a business model. It, it, is, it is literally just a tool within marketing. And so again, the only thing that you can do in order to understand your business is to uh, understand who your customer is and who is willing to part with their money and give it to you based off of the service or the product that you provide. Do you think it's better just in this day and age to um, conduct an analysis online through social media or to just go out in the field and do it on your own? 
or both. <laughs> so in order to really, um, I mean, it's all about the questions. So um, when you decide on your customer, how do you know? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a tip. Um, it, so I test my market. Facebook doesn't even know if I'm a male or a female. They don't know if I'm a Republican or a Democrat. They, it doesn't know who I am because I post different things. So what Facebook and Twitter and you know all of what they do is they they create algorithms around the things that you would normally like. So it doesn't know me. But if you have your social media centered around maybe a lot of headshots or a lot of um, you know uh, items of clothing that you're wearing, a lot of family, well, is this going to be your market? You don't know. So it, to try to test on social media, that means that you're saying that every one of your customers is going to be on social media and they are going to purchase there. So not everyone on social media will purchase on social media. So say you are targeting and you're trying to, to validate your business idea or your product and you, you start running ads or you start posting about the product, you'll have family and friends that'll buy because it's you, they love you, right? But then all of a sudden that's it. So people think that they have, an, have a, a, a successful product because the people they know are only supporting them. And it, so again, are they going to stay there or are they going to come off of the social media, Google to see if there is a similar product and purchase from there? So again, that is why the research is so, so, so important. All righty, we are going to have to wrap it up because we're out of time. Um, if anybody has any questions, please email us at startupsharp at arcpls.org. Uh, we will make sure to try to get your questions answered. Thank you so much, Ms. Rhodes, for coming on. We appreciate your expert advice today, and we will see you all next time. All right, thank you so much.